In this video, I'd like to share with you my top 10 tips for getting the very best out of your telescope and the night sky. Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, uh, these tips are in no particular order, but let's start off with number one, and that is get used to the dark, or should I say, get to love darkness, okay? Darkness is your friend, artificial light is your enemy. Okay, so the best thing to do here is try, if at all possible, to get set up before the sun sets, okay? And get yourself organized, all right? Get, get all the eyepieces that you're going to be needing, okay, uh, together. Uh, maybe that fl flask. Now, one thing you don't want to be doing is uh, keep nipping into the house for, you know, that eyepiece that you, you may have lost or, or that warm cup of tea or something. Have a flask, take it outside with you, have everything prepared and ready to go. Um, because you, what you need is to get what they call dark adapted eyes, okay? Um, and this can take up to 20 to 40 minutes to get your eyes properly dark adapted um, so you can see a lot a lot better you'll see um, when you first go out uh, when you look at the sky it doesn't seem quite you know as many stars as after maybe being out there half an hour or so and then all of a sudden the sky seems to be uh, full of stars and that is your dark your, your night vision if you like and nipping into uh, inside the house um, under artificial light will just zap that away in an instant, okay? And it's gonna take another 20 to 30 minutes for your eyes to get accustomed to the dark. You could also head. arm yourself with uh, a red light torch. Uh, these are e easily found on, on the internet. You could even make these out of uh, ordinary torches and just put a couple of layers of uh, electrical tape, red electrical tape on. Uh, some people actually like to use brown tape, but I always use um, red electrical tape on uh, ordinary torches and that seems to uh, get that light factor down because red light is kinder on our eyes than uh, harsh white and blue light. Okay, lights. tip number two, dress correctly. Okay, it's so important. A lot of uh, uh, newbies to the hobby, uh, that's one thing they, they don't, they underestimate the weather. Okay, always look at the conditions. If it's cold out there, if it feels cold when you first step outside, it's gonna feel freezing after about 10 or 15 minutes. So I have a full video on uh, the, the correct way of staying out there all night, but it's really important and thing, something you don't want to overlook look is putting the right gear on for those cold nights. Number three, never use your telescope indoors. Okay, now what I mean by that is don't um, open, sit inside in the nice warm, open the window, okay, and point your telescope through the window, um, especially for astronomical viewing. Well, this is mainly for astronomical viewing. Uh, well, what will happen is as, as all the warm airs flowing out of your nice warm house, it's gonna be hitting the cold air and you're gonna get that wobble effect, okay? And everything, you'll just not get no focus. What you've got to remember is telescopes are designed to be used outside, okay? Um, and that includes looking through windows as well. I mean, some, I know some people that, you know, say, I just can't get focus. And uh, they was actually had the telescope set up under their skylight in their uh, room, actually just looking through double glazing. Number four, always allow your telescope enough time to cool down. Okay, now this is another thing overlooked by people new to the hobby. Um, now, inside the tube, okay, if you take outside your telescope uh, in, uh, from a nice, again, from a warm in, inside to the cold outside, the warm air that's trapped inside the tube will actually interfere because we're using quite high magnifications will actually interfere with the, uh, you'll get the thermal effect, okay? Uh, and it'll be, again, a wobbly image. So it's really important to take your telescope out a good uh, 20 minutes uh, to, to, to an hour, really, to just let your telescope climatize to the cold uh, outside or, or to the same temperature um, as what the uh, temperature is outside. Okay, number five, let's get it out of the way, collimation. 
Okay, now this is purely for reflector users. You've got to make sure that your telescope is in good collimation. Um, now, don't think that, uh, you know, if you are a new telescope owner and your telescope hasn't been collimated, even after maybe uh, a month or two after first buying it, then you better start thinking um, again, okay, and uh, looking into collimating it pretty quick. Now, I have got a video on um, how to collimate a telescope, uh, a reflector telescope, and it's a no laser method, a really easy method. So I'll, again, I'll leave a link to uh, that one in, uh, in the description below. Number six get to learn the sky conditions okay now it's all right looking at the weather forecast and saying oh it's going to be a nice clear night tonight but sometimes you know it's that still might not be the best time and there's an easy test you can do um, and if you go outside on a nice clear night and look at the stars and see how they're twinkling okay now if they're quite vigorously going like that it usually means that the atmosphere is quite unstable what you're looking for is the stars to kind of move in a nice soft undulating pattern do you know what i mean and uh, also a nice if there's a little bit of mist in the air okay um just just a fine bit of mist in the air that's usually means that the atmosphere is really stable and it's perfect for viewing the planets and even the galaxies well astronomy in okay general. tip number seven now this one uh, may be a bit of a surprise to some of you if you've never heard of this before and that is when you get up to the eyepiece keep both eyes open okay because what happens is when you actually do this at the eyepiece and you're squinting and uh, looking through the eyepiece that actually sends electrical impulses across uh, to the other eye it actually makes the eyebrain, uh, eyeball vibrate a little bit um, and this is one of the reasons why you tend to think that it's, you've got a better image in bino viewers uh, which are a little bit like um, binoculars that fit into the eyepiece of a, uh, of a telescope and you just put two of the same eyepiece in there and uh, a lot of people say, oh, I can see so much better with bino viewers. It's not the case actually, they're seen exactly the same, it's just that you've got both eyes open. Now it is a little bit of a technique to get used to this and one thing that dramatically helps, you are going to look like a bit of a pirate, but is to buy or make yourself an eye patch, okay? Uh, you may get a few people say, oh, what have you done to your eye? <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, you are in the dark, so uh, nobody's going to see you. Um, okay, and if you wear this over the, over the eye that you don't obviously use for the eye, uh, uh, for the eyepiece, these, these really do help. And to be honest with you, I still use this. And where these uh, come in handy is if you've got a lot of localized light pollution. And what I mean by that is street lamps nearby, you know, there may be somebody's uh, security light that never turns off, my problem. And uh, when you've got both eyes open, you have a, you, you've got a few distractions, you know, you can see the reflections off this scope and things. Uh, so wearing an eye patch, uh, really does help this one. If there's one tip on this video that you need to try, you need to give this one a go. Okay, number eight. Now here's another little technique that takes a little bit of getting used to, but again, it's one of those uh, techniques that once you learn, you will always use. Now this one's especially useful if you like to look for some of the uh, fainter objects, some of the Messier targets, uh, a few fainter galaxies and uh, such like. And that is to use what they call averted vision, okay? Now this simply means is, if you look, you're looking straight at me, okay but be aware of everything else around you keep looking at me okay and just be aware of everything around you okay another way you can test averted vision is by taking uh, your hand out of view yeah and then not looking at your hand but bring it in and keep concentrating on your hand okay so you're like you're seeing it in the corner of your eye if you like now if you transfer this technique to the eyepiece okay and this really works well for me uh, on the ring nebula 
okay looking at the ring nebula if you look at it direct it's as though it like comes in and out of vision but using this averter technique i'm just looking to just to the side of it and just getting it in a corner of the eye if you like you can really see the ring uh, pop out so again a little technique for you to just try um it's, and it's well wor worth your learning this one learning the technique and uh, just to make it a little easier of finding those faint fuzzies okay tip number nine now you really are gonna think i'm um trying to insult your intelligence on this one and that is when it comes to dust covers and trust me people often ask about this center um little uh, piece that comes off in the middle and it's quite a mystery to, to uh, people who are new to the uh, hobby but um you need to remove all the dust cover okay um that includes you know you, you take the whole thing off it's not just this uh little little center bit in the middle okay that uh, people have, have asked me over the years you know do you know that, that that little bit do i leave that on or do i leave it off so remember to take the entire cover off okay now tip number 10 will uh, stay on dust covers and uh, you may have been asking yourself well why do they leave this uh, you know this hole this separate thing that's, that has a cap on it well this is like an aperture stop and if you haven't got a uh, moon filter say if you actually do leave this on because the moon is a big bright object we don't need much light from the moon because it's, it's generating it off and it can be really dazzling at times the moon especially if you don't use a, uh, a filter and if you haven't got a filter leave it on in this way you take your center cap off and leave it on you can do exactly the same reflector users can do exactly the same with these whoops i'll find it later <laughs> uh, you can uh, take the cap off just put it and then recap your telescope uh, with reflector users make sure that you don't hit the spider okay you don't want it halfway over the spider and just turn it over so you've got a space like that and this is perfect for uh, viewing the moon and it'll really take the, the glare out if you haven't got a filter well there you have it my uh, 10 top tips for getting the very best out of your telescope and the night sky thank you so much for watching if you liked uh, if you liked the video don't forget to hit that thumbs up because it really does help the channel and maybe subscribe if you haven't already subscribed in the meantime happy stargazing take care of yourselves and i will see you on the next one bye for now